Okay, good afternoon. My name is Mario Martina. I'm the PhD coordinator, the PhD in sustainable development and climate change. And today with me, there's also Marcello Arosio, the communication director of our PhD, and Fabio Negri, uh, who is the a member of the team uh, giving you support from the administration side. And together with Fabio, there's also Chiara Mussi and Virginia Borazzi. Uh, Marcello and Fabio will help me to answer to your questions and provide you assistance during this webinar. The webinar is organized in three parts. In the first part, I will shortly present the um, uh, the PhD, our PhD course, giving you general information. In the second part, I'll move to the uh, calls open, giving you some suggestions on uh, uh, how to prepare the CV, the research proposal, and the letter of purpose. And then on the third part, we will open to questions, and you can make questions using Q&A, the icon just in the bottom of your screen, or you can raise your hand. And there is another, another icon that you can use to make it. Uh, the Q&A is also useful because if you have questions and you don't want to wait until the end of the webinar, you can make the questions while I'm talking without disturbing anybody. And Marcello and Fabio will help me to answer to all the questions. We try to answer to all the questions, but please pay attention to avoid to repeat questions already made. Uh, now I'm going to lower all the uh, attendees ends because until the end of the second part, when we start the third um, the third part of our presentation, you cannot interrupt the webinar. The recording of this, web this webinar will, make, will be made available on our YouTube channel, which is www.youtube.com slash at PhD dash SDC. Okay, very well. Okay, I'm very happy now to start presenting our PhD. The presentation will be about 15 minutes and then we'll go to the instructions uh, on the open calls. Um, the motivation we started to think about this PhD uh, were mainly because we had two big questions. How can we contribute to the achievement of the SDG, the Sustainable Development Goals by the UN Agenda 2030? And also, how can we contribute to addressing climate change while we are facing the effect of this climate change already during these days? For this reason, we thought that in our educational system, was important to propose a new PhD on sustainable development and climate change, which should be uh, open to all the disciplines to contribute by means of the different research tools disciplines have uh, to contribute, to solve and to, and to address these uh, two big problems, sustainable development and climate change. In this picture, you, see, you can see the six curricula uh, the uh, PhD is made of. We are facing with this PhD three challenges. One is a scientific challenge because we are trying to uh, put together these two important pieces of the same problem, proposing new sustainable models for the development and also understanding the climate change and especially the impact of climate change. This is a big scientific challenge. But besides the scientific challenge, we have an academic challenge because we want to do research across the disciplines. 
not within just one discipline, because we feel that disciplines should be linked, interconnected. And another, nor um, even um, as relevant as the other, uh, we are now proposing and building a new PhD model in the educational system because it's a, a PhD uh, on, uh, based on a network of institutions, on a network of universities. The project started in 2019. We proposed the project to our Ministry of U University and Research, and we opened the expression of interest in 2020 we had the interest, received the interest of about 30 universities at that time. And together we designed the uh, PhD uh, course, as you uh, can know, can see now. The PhD uh, is made of six different curricula. Uh, each curricula does not uh, is not within one discipline, but is across multiple disciplines. Curriculum number one, Air System and Environment, is uh, about understanding all the complexity about the air system, air processes, and its environment. Curriculum number two, Socioeconomic Risk and Impacts, uh, is working on the tools to assess to measure, to monitor the impact, especially those uh, social and economic uh, due to climate change and due to also the transition uh, to uh, new sustainable uh, models. The curriculum number three is about technology and territory and is made of many uh, research topics uh, looking for disruptive technologies and also new way to plan and to um, maintain our territory and to adapt our territory uh, um, after climate change. Curriculum number four, theories, institutions and culture is looking to all the ethical, uh, philosophical, social and also um, uh, low uh, perspectives about climate change. Agriculture and forestry, looking also to new technologies applied to manage agriculture, the food uh, and climate nexus, uh, the problem of CO2 emissions and the management of CO2 emissions. And curriculum number six is about the health impact of climate change and the impact of ecosystems. The PhD uh, is hosted in one university, is the university where also I work, is University Use at Pavia, is School for Advanced Studies in Pavia, is the headquarter of a network of now 57 universities in Italy, all connected and coordinated within one network. The uh, headquarter, uh, Pavia, has also, uh, most of the time, the uh, venue of multidisciplinary events I'm going to present in a minute. And the images and the video you can see is the first multidisciplinary event we organized in 2021. How the course is organized? Uh, in the headquarter, uh, the headquarter provides uh, the PhD coordination, the administrative services, but each PhD student is hosted by one of the 57 universities where he or she can find a research supervisor, a research team and environment, and also can use all the research resources. The PhD candidate carries out re research activities at the host universities on a specific research topic and is enrolled in one PhD, a unique PhD at use. So the community of all the PhD candidates and students is just one community, although the city and the university you are hosted in. Uh, the aim of such a model 
is to try to facilitate and stimulate the interactions between uh, PhD candidates and their supervisors but also the collaboration between the different PhD at, uh, candidates at different universities and the collaboration also uh, within uh, different uh, supervisors. Some numbers, uh, the, uh, in 2022, we started the first course uh, with the 30 partner universities. Then uh, we got 52 in 2023, and now we are 57. Uh, at the beginning, we were 130 professors and researchers. We moved to 160, and now we are more than 200 professors and researchers as supervisor and co-supervisors of the PhD candidates. Uh, 2022, we started with 105. Then in 2023, 230. And now in 2024, for the next year, we estimate uh, 350, the total number of PhD students. Uh, we move, We went from uh, three public institutions to 25 public institutions, and from one private institution to 24 private institutions. These are the partners and the big community of our PhD course. And this is a snapshot of uh, the, um, the fundings, the type of fundings. Uh, now we are uh, about 31 million of uh, uh, funding for our PhD and 54% uh, of these fundings comes from the uh, next generation EU funds. The governance is made of three important bodies. One, which is the traditional body uh, managing PhD, is the scientific board made of 75 members, but we have a coordination committee of 10 members made of the CU coordinator of the six curricula, an international advisory board of 10 members coming from uh, representative uh, institutions and uh, companies uh, looking uh, to solve and to contribute to the problem of uh, climate change and sustainability. This is the coordination committee. Uh, me as a PhD coordinator, Roberto Buizza, is uh, uh, the founder together with me of this PhD, Claudia Lupi, curriculum number one, Elisa Giuliani, curriculum number two, Alberto Poggio, curriculum number three, Alberto Pirni, curriculum number four, Cristina Nali, curriculum number five, and Marina Boido, curriculum number six. Uh, we we usually say that there are three dimensions of our PhD. Uh, an horizontal dimension, which is the common core uh, topic, sustainable development and climate change, vertical dimensions uh, uh, of each uh, curriculum of our PhD, and uh, a specific uh, focus uh, dimension, and that is the dimension of uh, each research one candidate is conducting during the PhD course. Uh, given this structure, we have two big pillars for our PhD, the educational and the research programs. The educational program uh, following uh, the structure of our PhD uh, will provide uh, different courses according to the different aims of each dimension. In the horizontal dimension, we organize multidisciplinary events to expose all the PhD candidates to the complexity as a whole of the sustainability and the climate change problem. In the vertical dimension for each curriculum, we organize events to train PhD candidates on tools and topics common to the scientific cur curriculum they are following. And the focus and disciplinary course that are selections of thematic and methodological courses suggested by each supervisor and each co-supervisor offered usually by the local universities. Just to give you an idea of the hours of training we plan every, for every cycle, we have at least 48 hours for the multidisciplinary event, 48 hours for the CU event, and 64 hours for focus and disciplinary. These are the number of hours in total over the three years. 
And besides the educational program, of course, you need to also uh, conduct your research activity. This is an example of calendar of uh, the educational program uh, over the three years. Usually we have one big seasonal event every year. In regarding the research, uh, besides the six uh, different curricula, there are different research areas uh, each research topic can, uh, can belong to. And uh, these uh, areas are also very uh, interconnected, transdisciplinary. And you can see uh, these in a picture showing uh, the curriculum and the ERC sector, the European Research Council sectors. And you can see that all the sectors are basically covered, going from the physical science, engineering, life sciences, social sciences, and humanities. And uh, another way to see that if uh, uh, on the right side, uh, here are the research topics of the last year. And each research topics, as you see, is connected with one of the ERC sector is within one of the uh, curricula of the, uh, of the uh, PhD. But this picture gives you an idea how interconnected all the research topics are and how we want to facilitate the transdisciplinary approach of the research. And this is a snapshot of some of the keywords of the uh, topics, the main topics uh, we are facing during our PhD. Uh, in the last uh, two years, we got uh, more than 1,800 uh, uh, submissions uh, for our um, for our uh, call for applications uh, and coming from about 37 different countries and uh, uh, you see Italy but there are other areas uh, uh, very very um, represented in the uh, submission phase. Uh, to summarize the key features, uh, our program is completed in English. Uh, all the activities, training for educational program, but also the research are fully in English. Three years is the duration of the program. 160 hours of training, six months of research abroad, uh, strongly recommended uh, and uh, I can say mandatory for some research topics uh, which are funded by uh, the uh, PNRR uh, funds. A network of more 50 university, which means more than 50 Italian uh, cities where PhD candidates coming from all over the world can not only know their host universities, but they can also travel across all these cities and universities to know the educational uh, system, the university system as a whole in Italy. 200 and more professors and researchers. And also another uh, peculiarity of this PhD is a budget of 10K, uh, uh, 10,000 euro approximately for each PhD candidates for mobility and research expenses. This is something just national PhD as ours can afford and can provide to PhD students. In, the, uh, in our MD event, in our uh, courses and training, uh, we work uh, on sustainable development goals. This is uh, a picture of the histogram of the main uh, SDG we work on. And this is also a snapshot of our knowledge wall that we built during uh, our last MD event uh, in Bologna last May, where we try to work on the key concept and how we can actually um, propose the, uh, to, to, to work on this complexity during our PhD uh, activities. Uh, these activities were organized in uh, war teams. Uh, war teams uh, is a very uh, important uh, approach to face uh, the MD event where we try to make people working uh, for two, three days within a team of uh, 10, 15 people uh, trying to um, 
propose a new way to collaborate, new way to uh, address the research uh, aims we have during uh, the, uh, the PhD course in our research program. The calls. And now I move uh, uh, very quickly to the second part. Uh, the calls for applications are now open. The first call has a deadline, the 17th of July, next Monday. The second call has a deadline, the 4th of August. Before moving, though, to the um, to our uh, to the to the second part about the calls, let me also say that our PhD is a very peculiar PhD because it's a national PhD. It's a PhD of national interest. If you want to know more about that, you can go to dottoratinazionali.it. Here is the link where you can see uh, how many and how big is the network of national PhD in Italy. And the aim of all these PhD is to network the Italian, Italian research system and to try to facilitate the collaboration of excellences in Italy by means of providing a PhD course. I remember to all of you the uh, website of our PhD. I will share the screen in a minute uh, to show you some sections uh, of our um, website phd-sdc.it. And this is the family of our PhD students of the 38th cycle. Remember also that we have uh, uh, social uh, sites, uh, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube, and you can find the links to all these socials in our websites. Now, let's move to the second part of this presentation, the calls for applications. Uh, uh, two calls for applications open. The first one has a deadline, the 17th of July at, remember, 1 p.m. Central European Summer Time, Italian time. This is very important. It's not the end of the day, but is 1 p.m. Central European sum Summer Time, Italian time. And uh, I suggest to not submit the uh, application the last minute. Please try to submit your application a few days before the deadline in order to avoid uh, you know, any system uh, breakdown uh, could be in the last minutes of the application. This call is for 111 scholarships. And there is another call the deadline is the 4th of August and uh, the same time, 1 p.m. Central European Summer Time for 11 uh, additional scholarships. These 11 scholarships uh, are also uh, different from the others because they are innovative PhD scholarships. Uh, innovative is the definition of the ministry to define scholarships which are co-financed by um, companies. And uh, there is a period of uh, uh, six months minimum, 18 months maximum of internship in one of the uh, companies co-funded this PhD course. You can apply for both calls. So uh, many questions we receive, it is absolutely allow to apply for both calls simultaneously. For each call, you can choose only one curriculum. You cannot submit a call with uh, se selecting two different curriculums. If you want, in different calls, you can choose different curriculum, but within the same call, you can choose just one curriculum. Uh, once you selected the curriculum, you can choose up to three research topics in a specific order of preference. And uh, the uh, submission, uh, the, the required documents in the submissions are a curriculum vitae, a research proposal written on your first 
research topic choice, a letter of purpose, in general, on all the choices that you made, a degree certificate or transcript of the exams. Let me give you some suggestions, tips uh, for uh, these important documents. The curriculum vitae must be in English. Uh, the only language allowed for the curriculum vitae is English, maximum 2,000 words. The education, qualification, and training part is an important part of your curriculum. You need to specify all the qualifications you got uh, in your educational system, and if you made also training during uh, the uh, education. Then you need also to report all the experiences you may have in the research or in the work world. Uh, that is not compulsory because some of you uh, have just got your the, their graduation. But if you have any experience of work or research, please specify there. Then if you have any publication, please also report there. Any type of public publication is good, academic or not academic. And again, don't worry if you don't have any publication because you may just uh, probably have your degree that's fine but if you have publication please remember to list there and the end if you also have experience in the academic or in the professional world please report there also this part is not compulsory some of you may not have experience in the academic or the professional world don't worry but if you have any, please remember to report. Second document is the research proposal. Also, the research proposal should be written in English. It could go from 1,000 to 2,500 words. So approximately between two and five pages, excluding the references if you got. Don't worry if the references exceed this limit. The research proposal is on the research topic that you have chosen as your first preference. So you know that you have three preferences, three research topics that you can choose, and you need to specify the order. Well, the research proposal should be written just on the first research topic. You need uh, to structure your research proposal in order to be uh, very well um, understandable and clear. So for this reason, we suggest you to follow this structure. You prepare an abstract of about 250 words, which means a half page, a research scope and question paragraph. So in a, in a paragraph, you need to specify, to clarify, what is the scope of the research and which scientific questions you would like to answer to during your PhD. Then you write a paragraph on the methodology or on the methodologies you would like to follow, to apply in order to uh, answer to those uh, scientific questions. And then another uh, paragraph about expected results and impacts. So what are the results in terms of not just publications, but also uh, possible uh, tools, uh, possible products, uh, or laws, uh, or suggestions, recommendations, reports you would like to get out from your PhD? And which are the impacts, ideally, you would like to have? Uh, which are the stakeholders you would like to reach? Okay. This research proposal is a very important document. Remember that when you write a research proposal is on a specific research topic, the research topic is described in the research program you can download from our website. Before writing your research proposal, please read carefully the research topic. The research topic is a guide, is a, is a guidance to uh, provide you which is the context of your research. 
within that context, uh, you can now propose how you would like to conduct your research. Of course, uh, this is a way for us in the commission to evaluate your capabilities to do your research. This will not be a constraint for your PhD course, for your PhD life. During your PhD course, you may probably uh, feel the need to adjust your research proposal to uh, modify something that you wrote at the beginning when you submit the application. That's okay. This is just uh, for us a tool, a base for providing a, um, a evaluation on your research capabilities. This is the purpose of the research proposal. The other important document is the letter of purpose. Uh, should be written in English. Uh, is about one page, maximum 500 words. And this letter of purpose, in this letter of purpose, you can be more informal. If you want, you can write, or you can write a little bit about yourself, which are the motivations, uh, the interest that you have, which are your relevant skills that you want to highlight uh, on uh, from your CV. And which are the relevant experience that you may that that make you a good candidate for this PhD? The letter of purpose is not on one specific research topics. It's about your choice. So it's about the selection of, of the research topics that you made. And uh, when you write the motivations and the interests, please include uh, your personal. Um, uh, perspective. Don't be shy. You can also refer to uh, personal life or, or your academic career. Then another important document that you, not, you do not have to forget is the degree certificate. There are other languages that are accepted uh, uh, besides English. Actually, it's not Italian. It's not just the English Italian, but also Spanish and, uh, and French. And uh, this uh, degree is just uh, a, a, a document where your university will report the correct title of your degree, your career. And uh, um, for the Italian uh, candidates, it's possible by means of a law to substitute this degree certificate with a self-declaration, auto-certificazione. The self-declaration can be downloaded the template of the self-declaration can be downloaded by uh, from your uh, university, and it contains the title and also all the transcripts uh, of the exams that you made during your career. For foreign degrees, uh, uh, one of these is good, the degree certificate, diploma supplement, but in case uh, you are not yet uh, graduated, that is okay, uh, remember to upload the transcripts of the exams. This is important for us because you can understand your career, we can understand uh, your experience, uh, and we can understand also if you are fit for the research topics you are candidated. Um, the transcripts of the exams uh, should report there also the evaluations. Be sure the evaluation the scores of these is available. Okay, uh, once you submitted these, we will start the evaluation process. So the evaluation process uh, is made uh, of uh, three important uh, evaluation. We evaluate your qualifications, and this evaluation uh, um, is, is based on the CV, the academic degree, the transcript, and the research proposal, a letter of purpose. As you see, you need to reach a minimum of 35 points, a score of minimum 35 points over 60. And the maximum point for the CV and the academic degree is 20. The maximum points for the research proposal and the letter of purpose together is 40. So you need to reach at least 35 in order to be admitted for the oral interview. The oral interview has a score of maximum 40 points. 
A third aspect is uh, that the commission will also evaluate your eligibility for each of the research topics you selected. So imagine that you selected three research topics, one, two, three, you can get one qualification, one, one unique score for the qualification of the oral interview, but for the three different uh, scholarships, you may have the eligibility just uh, for two out of three. So your final point will be then these uh, made of these three important numbers, qualifications, oral interview, and eligibility. The final ranking will appear like that. Imagine that these are uh, the candidates obtain these scores, 89, Mickey, 87, Minnie, 83, Goofy, and so on. And here you see their uh, preferences. For instance, Mickey chose as a first preference uh, the, the curriculum, uh, um, the scholarship CUX01, then uh, these as a second choice, uh, scholarship number three, and scholarship number four as a third choice, and so on the others. So this has, uh, this is, has uh, this, the final ranking, ranking will appear. Let me uh, simulate how the ranking will be used to assign the scholarship. We will proceed from the first going down. And, uh, and then for each of candidate will follow the preferences. So to Miki, we will then uh, ask if you want to accept uh, the scholarship number one. If Miki accept that, is in uh, our PhD course. Then we will proceed to Mini. Uh, scholarship number five is available, was uh, her choice, first choice, and then she will get this uh, as a scholarship. Remember, then, uh, when we will ask you the acceptance to the uh, PhD scholarships, we will propose to you just one scholarship, which is the scholarship of your highest uh, preferences. We will not give you the possibility to change your preference. So it's very important when you make your submission to uh, uh, think about the order of the preferences that you submitted. So Goofy now, uh, unfortunately, has not the possibility to choose as first choice because that scholarship has been already assigned. For this reason, we will propose to Goofy uh, scholarship number two, which was uh, his second preferences. If Goofy accepts, then is he him. Donald, uh, the same uh, situation, has not any more scholarship number two available, but he will he can choose uh, uh, to accept curriculum um, scholarship number four. And this is him. Then we move to Pluto. Imagine that Pluto has not the third choice available. Is the second choice available, but Pluto says uh, that he doesn't want to accept that scholarship. That in this case, Pluto, unfortunately, is out. We will move to Scrooge. Scrooge has the first scholarship uh, of its uh, preference not anymore available neither the second one, neither the third one, and unfortunately also Scrooge is out of the PhD. This is just a, a very short simulation to, uh, to, to understand how the ranking will be used by our secretary to assign the scholarships. Very well, uh, I'm now uh, done with the uh, presentation. Uh, this presentation is also available on our website. Now let's move to the uh, questions. Why we are talking, I see in the question and answers uh, uh, session, there are many questions. Uh, I'll go to that uh, in a minute. Uh, in the meantime, uh, uh, Marcello and Fabio are already answering uh, to the other questions. Now, let me give the floor to the uh, um, attendees, uh, they uh, raise the hand. So I will start, and sorry for my pronunciation, I will start with Temeselevi, Woldesedic, Mawogadite. Temeselevi? Yes, good afternoon, how are you? Good afternoon. 
Good. Is it audible? I'm 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 hearing very well. So you can. Okay. Hear. Good. Good. Thank you. So I am interested uh, in the PhD in sustainable development. I have a background in. Uh, no, sorry, academics. sorry, sorry, Temesle. Let me let yeah. me give you a, a suggestion. Do okay. not refer to specific individual situations. I'm not gonna answer here about if you are eligible or not to our PhD given your career. We do not have the time to do that. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is to solve your doubts. If you have doubt and questions on how to uh, submit an application. So I cannot go through your career here in just uh, half an hour or so. Please, uh, if you have doubt or questions, I'm very happy to answer too. But if you want to see if you are eligible or not for, you, for this PhD, the only way, the best way is to submit an application. Okay, thank you. I have already started the application. I will proceed on it. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much and good luck. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Okay, um, another information. Uh, I didn't go uh, through the platform that you are using to submit your application, but we have a webinar available in our uh, YouTube channel that is specifically on how to present a uh, to present the uh, application. I'm writing here our YouTube channel. So if you have doubt on the technical aspects of the platform, please go there. And there are two seminars, one more general on the, our PhD, and the second one on the uh, platform we are using, providing you a um, going through uh, the different steps of the platform. Thank you. Now let's move to uh, Akpovi Basile. Akpovi, can you hear me? You are mute. Okay. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Okay. I guess you just be lying on uh, right now. But I want to know if uh, you guys uh, you can uh, uh, we can uh, we can get a uh, scholarship. And then uh, uh, get a uh, institution in your university, in your own university, in your country. Is it possible to establish a, a scholarship? Like uh, I register in my university, and then uh, uh, I get a uh, scholarship from uh, uh, from this uh, organization. Is it possible to get it? Is it get possible to do it? Okay, yeah, of course, you can uh, um, apply for this scholarship. If you get your scholarship, then uh, you will be hosted by one of the uh, host universities in our PhD. This means that your scholarship will allow you to uh, provide for your personal expenses for three years. Okay, this is... Uh, um, the scholarship is about 1,200 euro, euro per month. And uh, on top of that, you have a research budget of 10,000 euro, almost 9,700 precisely for the three years uh, for reimbursement of research expenses like uh, missions, so which means uh, travels, accommodations, if you need to buy computers, devices for your research. Okay, now I, let me let me uh, move to um, Emmanuel Ogunola. Emmanuel? Thank you very much, Mario. Yeah, can I, the first and the second one that you talked about, if I'm not pick, if I'm pick for the first scholarship, and also, probably I'm lucky to have the chance for the second one. 
how can I just or is there any, a way to to choose for me? Yeah. Or for me to choose for myself, either of the two. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the question. Emmanuel, yes, you can apply for both uh, applications. And the, as I said, and the final results uh, will be uh, published uh, simultaneously. This means that you can choose which scholarships, if you want, if you're awarded with, with the two scholarships, one on the first call and the second in the second call, you will choose uh, uh, which one you want to accept. You will have this possibility, okay? Of course, we need uh, to uh, follow the ranking, which means that uh, uh, when you have the final score and the, the final score is a, a good score, does not mean straightforward that you are awarded with a scholarship because there could be people above you selecting the same scholarship. So we will follow the, um, the, the ranking and then we will send you an email saying, uh, okay, you have been awarded with the scholarship for this uh, curriculum uh, in, in, uh, in the first application and with this other scholarship in the second application, which one you want to choose. So you will have this possibility, Emmanuel. Thank you. Okay, now we can move to uh, Babesh Gulati. Babesh, you can talk. Uh, hello, yes. Um, I have uh, two questions. First, uh, for the letter of purpose, that uh, if I'm choosing two topics from the <laughs> same curriculum, so I have to write two different letter of purpose or I have to include my both interest in one letter of purpose? You can use the same letter of purpose. Yeah. Yeah, if you, uh, of course, the research proposal is different uh, in the two calls because one is on uh, a research topic, which is not in the second one, but let, the letter of purpose can be the same because uh, the motivation and the interest of you are the same and you can just uh, uh, copy and paste the same letter. Okay. Okay. And the second question I have, uh, like I also wrote an email about the, grading system and I got a reply from Fabio uh, but it was not so clear because yeah, of the yeah. German grading system even I was selecting the topic uh, the score which was a uh, four out of five it was not being uh, it was not being a total value to my grades because uh, when I converted it with the formula I am getting 4.3 out of five Okay. So you can report, yeah, of course, uh, the number, the score should be the official one. So if the official one is for 4.3 out of 5, you can report 4.3 uh, out of 5. That is okay. In the, in the platform, if you notice, for the scores, you have, basically, you have uh, two fields. One is the score, and the second one is uh, out of which number is that score. So in your example, you will report 4.3 and the second number 5. The reason we need these two fields is to convert all the scores within the SACE system, and we will actually convert in the Italian system, okay? But of course, being a ratio doesn't matter which system you are because this ratio will give you a very straightforward conversion. Hmm? Thank you. Uh, let me move now to uh, Ahmed Talal. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you very well. Uh, uh, thanks a lot, very good uh, presentation. Quite uh, knowledgeable. I just need to ask that uh, the proceed, uh, proceeding after the admission, uh, like we have a long, long queue for the it, uh, visa of Italy in our country. So once if a, a candidate gets uh, uh, admission in PhD and for a few period of time that he's not getting a visa of Italy to come, 
will you will there some uh, relaxation or where a candidate should have to meet the deadline on earliest once he get uh, admission Unfortunately, Ahmed, I, I, I'm, I'm really sorry I didn't get your question. What is the question? Uh, I'll, I'll say that actually uh, once any dates gets uh, admission, let's see that, uh, if, for example, my admission is secured and I have to reach Italy in time. But actually in our country, in Pakistan, there's an issue that there's a long queue in Italian embassy for issuance of visas. Let's ah, suppose okay. that I have got. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Well, um, I cannot answer to this because I don't know the uh, visa um, process in your country. Uh, however, uh, once he, we publish the ranking and you accept the scholarship, uh, there is a, a website, uh, Universitali, Universitali, which is uh, a platform to um, facilitate the process to get the visa. So there is a, a specific uh, guidance uh, step by step to get the visa once you got the uh, letter of acceptance uh, uh, from our university. Mm. Uh, let me move now to Sadia Rana. Sadia? Uh, yes, hello. Uh, Sadia hello. is here. Uh, yes, my question is that uh, it is mentioned on the uh, call of paper that uh, what does it mean of six months of in internship? That uh, yeah. uh, when we get selected, then uh, we probably get connected with some institute or what? And uh, we will get paid or could you very important question thank you sadia yeah okay let me um, give you a little bit of uh, information about the internship okay and uh, i take the opportunity to uh, share my screen in our um for our uh our website uh, all of you uh, can browse uh, the research topics uh, here in uh, our um, in our um, uh, engine. Uh, I'm now, uh, for instance, typing uh, my colleague's name, Marcello Rosio, and uh, you can see, for instance, uh, uh, the scholarships, the description of the scholarships. Uh, and uh, if there is an internship the, here, you can see why, which means, yes, there is an internship period. You can also uh, see all the specific about that if you go to the announcement. So let's, for instance, open the second call. And uh, in this second call, you have uh, the instructions on how to submit. You have the announcement. Uh, the text of the announcement and at the end you will find the document about the research topics the uh, if you go to one of these uh, uh, research topics uh, you can see the description of the research topics uh, all the information that i was mentioning before but at the end you have also uh, uh, the description of where the internship will be uh, uh, will be if there is an internship period where the internship will be. Okay, so my suggestion is when you uh, submit your application to read very carefully these documents that you can find here on the announcement because these documents uh, contains contain a lot of information about the procedure and uh, about uh, uh, each of the scholarships you would like to apply to, okay? And also, I invite you, if you have any doubt or you would like to have more information, you can write to the reference person who actually proposed this research topic. Okay, going back to the question uh, Sadia uh, just made, what is the internship period? These PhD is uh, intended to be a PhD not just for the academic career, but also for a professional career. 
So people going out from this PhD, they will have a certification of their capability to do research as a tool, as an approach to solve problems. And this is also useful for the industry. So many, many companies are looking for people who are able to do research and developments within their institution, their uh, company. And also public institutions are looking for these important capabilities, these important skills. So be able to do research means that you have an open mind, you try to uh, pose the right questions, try to find the answers, also within a complex uh, uh, context uh, has the problem of sustainability development and climate change. For this reason, for some scholarships, uh, we made an agreement with companies that are co-funding the scholarships to host you for a period of minimum six months and maximum 18 months at their institution, at their company. You will be part of the uh, company team, specifically in the research and development team, to spend six months to understand how the real world, how the industry world is working. What are the important problems about sustainable development, about the SDGs, about the impact of climate change, the new regulations, the new role, the new uh, uh, carbon dioxide emissions limits, uh, which are the impacts, how we can organize also the industry to work in a different way, in a different world. For this reason, the six, the six months of internship is intended to be a, an opportunity for you to uh, have a preview of what the real world will ask to you at the end of your PhD problem. During your research, you are exposed to new problems, to new needs, and you will include in your research these new questions. Try to find a, a practical and feasible way to solve those problems. That's, uh, that's the, the, the reason we include an internship. Of course, not all the research topics are on this track. There are some research topics more, let's say, theoretical, which uh, uh, do not have, plan to have an internship period. But there are many research topics, as you see, they have a more practical sound and they want to give you during this internship uh, an extra opportunity uh, during the, the PhD course. Okay, Sadia, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, let's move now uh, to. Before going to the other uh, questions you may have uh, during the talk, uh, let's uh, also read some of the questions in the Q&A. Um, for instance, uh, Huma Hussain is asking, is this PhD program fully funded for international candidates? Yes. All the international candidates are equally treated as the national candidates. The scholarship amount is the same and the program is full in English. So we are an international PhD. Um, among the research fields, uh, what is the world ranking of USPAVIA and how we see it ascend in the next three years? Ah, good question, Sadashiv. So let me spend a couple of words about the, our university. Our university is a special university because it is a, a school for advanced studies. In Italian, we say that this university is at ordinamento speciale, is a scuola superiore, advanced study universities, which means is a university that is on uh, a, a higher level looking specifically for postgraduate uh, courses like master and uh, PhD courses. And together with us, there are other six universities uh, of this type, like uh, Normale di Pisa, Scuola Normale di Pisa, or Sant'Anna di Pisa, Scuola Superiore Sant'Anna di Pisa, GSSSI, Gran Sasso Science Institute, uh, Sisa in Trieste, 
IMT in Lucca, and now uh, from this year also Scuola Normale Superiore Meridionale. So these uh, seven universities now are a um, particular um, focus on uh, study of excellences. And we are experimenting also new models for our educational systems of, uh, for instance, master's and PhD courses. There is not a specific ranking uh, for our university that I can provide to you, but our university is uh, really a top ranked university in terms of uh, research and in terms of didactics. But let me remember also that this PhD is not a PhD of USPAVIA. USPAVIA is the headquarter, but this PhD is a PhD of 57 universities. All these universities, they count similarly at the same. So when you uh, apply for scholarships, you choose also a specific universities a specific university you will be hosted to and you will spend your research activities. So these 57 universities, they share a common program, research and educational program. And we are trying to collaborate together to provide the best courses and the best opportunities for these PhD course. So I would remember to you that this PhD is a national PhD. It represents the national effort to organize a PhD course on sustainable development and climate change. Thank you for the question. Another question, among the research fields, I have not seen chemistry. Is it present? Yes. Uh, let me remember that all the disciplines are represented here and uh, in each uh, <clears throat> curriculum, there is a piece of chemistry, but the chemistry uh, is mostly represented in curriculum number three, in the technology and territory curriculum. If you browse the research topics for curriculum number three, you can find many chemistry topics. Another question is, uh, uh, generally the research proposal should be of how many pages? Yeah, I told you the pages is between two and five, so between 1,000 words and uh, 2,500 words. Um, the research proposal, uh, the research proposal which is submitted during the call, will be followed during the PhD. The PhD, okay, Mohamed, uh, as I was saying, uh, uh, is a start. The research proposal you are submitting is just a start. Uh, you are not constrained to follow that uh, research proposal, but is uh, an agreement that you will reach with your supervisor. If there are modifications or diversions that you want to make during your PhD, that is okay. Uh, your supervisor will advise you on which will be the real research proposal you need to follow during your PhD course. Um, uh, Yuma Hussein asked to elaborate eligibility. Okay, after interview phase. Yes, very important question. What is the eligibility? In Italian, we say idoneità. Eligibility means that you are able, according to the um, commission, uh, to follow that research topics. Let me make you an example. Uh, as you see, there are no specific requirements in terms of uh, uh, the, the, the graduation that you need to get for a research topic, okay? You can uh, apply for an engineering research topic, even if you are a philosopher, okay? However, there is an important information that you can probably get from the, uh, the research uh, topics. Let me open again. You see here, there is a description of suggested skills for these research topics. And each of us has tried to give you suggestions on the skills that ideally a candidate should have to successfully perform a PhD, okay? So this means that if I am doing a PhD in chemistry and I'm coming from philosophy, probably there are some things, some qualifications 
that are necessary to perform successfully the, 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 the scholarship, okay? For this reason, when you apply for a scholarship, uh, the commission will evaluate if you have all the skills, all the qualifications to do successfully that scholarships. Uh, in uh, the three choices that you have, that you made, you may be eligible for all the three scholarships, or you may be eligible just for one or two of these uh, scholarships. Uh, and this is a, a guarantee for you that if you accept that scholarship, the commission has, has uh, evaluated your uh, career and your skills are sufficient uh, to perform a satisfactory uh, PhD course. So for this reason, my suggestion is to read carefully that paragraph where the skills are listed uh, in order to know if you are fit for that scholarships. Some of the scholarships, the skills are very general, which means that you are coming from different fields and that's okay. Other scholarships are a little bit more narrow. And uh, if there is a research topic specific on an aspect of chemistry, probably is very, uh, is much better, is much easier for a chemistry to, uh, to apply for that scholarships than for a lawyer, for instance. Uh, going back to the questions and answers, um, another question about what is the difference between the scholarships options that were shown in the final ranking tables. Uh, yeah, the, the, the different options is uh, the, the order of preferences that you selected. So uh, let me share again the, um, let me share again the, the screen for a minute. Here, this is the final ranking. As you see, imagine that you are Donald and you've got the, uh, a score of 78. You choose as a first scholarship. Let me see if there is a last point. Yes, as a first choice, this scholarship, which is number two. As a second choice, this scholarship, which is number four. As a third choice, this scholarship, which is number three. So when I, I simulated the, uh, the ranking, uh, I wanted to show you that uh, uh, we will proceed uh, following uh, the uh, order of preferences. For instance, here in Goofy, because scholarship number one has been already assigned to Mickey, which was uh, uh, higher in the ranking, when we, re when we arrive to you, scholarship of your first preference is not available anymore. And that's why we will move to the second choice. Okay, I hope uh, I was clear now. Um, Mary Glenn has asked how the research proposal must be done. I'd like to understand more related to these. Uh, do I need to make a, a paper? Let me know. Yeah, okay. A scholarship is just a document like in a word uh, or like uh, in other program uh, like a, a, a text file, basically. A text file that uh, you need to structure uh, in abstract, uh, scope and questions, methodology, and expected results and impacts, okay? So imagine the document made of four paragraphs. This document uh, has a minimum, um, minimum number of two pages, maximum number of five pages. The reason we, da we, we give this number in words is because the number of pages is not fixed depending on, uh, on the font size, all these things. For this reason, we give you as a range between 1000 words and 2500 words. So this document can also have pictures, figures, schemes, sketch, whatever you think is uh, useful to uh, communicate your ideas. Uh, is a sort of essay, imagine, where you propose on that specific research topics what you would like to do for the next three years. Don't be uh, scared about the fact that we are asking you to, to make a proposal on a, a, a subject that probably you never 
uh, you never uh, faced before. This is not important. For us, it is important to read carefully your research proposal and to understand how your reasoning, what is your um, mindset, uh, if you have the already an idea of what are uh, the scope of the research, which are the, the important uh, scientific questions. So we will not assess the research proposal uh, as it, it is a, a paper, a scientific paper, because we know you are not yet a researcher. You will be a researcher. Now you are a student that wants to know how to make research, but has already an attitude to research. We want to assess the attitude, your attitude to, to, to do research, okay? Please try to avoid to copy and paste uh, from, uh, um, from the web or, or from other papers. We are not asking these. We are not asking to make a, 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 a research paper uh, bringing uh, pieces from different uh, parts. No, we want this as a, 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 a tool to show your way of thinking, okay? So it's very personal. Don't be shy, don't be scared, and don't be worried about this research proposal. Put there all your efforts to, you know, make the other people understand that you are open to the questions, you have an attitude, curiosity for the research, and you have already an idea on how to structure the research for three years. Okay, thank you for the question. Um, let me move to the, I'm talking about references. Uh, okay, yeah, the, in, the research, in the research proposal, you can put also references, and the references will not count in the total number of words. Yeah, references are very welcome. Um, also, please clarify if there is uh, any weightage given to the candidates. Uh, having got the degrees related to climate change and sustainable development. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, Adil, very important question. Yes, in the evaluation, uh, we evaluate not just uh, the uh, qualification, but also the coherence. Uh, of your degree. If you have a degree on uh, climate change, for instance, you are mentioning, and you apply uh, on a scholarship on uh, climate change impacts, the social and economic impact, that is a good coherence. So we try to give more uh, higher points where there is a higher uh, consistency, higher uh, coherence between uh, your academic path and the research topic you are applying to, okay? I want to get detail about references, no. Uh, when writing proposal, can we select sampling and population of another country? Yes, yes, you can use data from other country, that, that, is, uh, that is okay. Uh, what about the introduction in the research proposal? Yeah, uh, okay. Well, I mentioned these uh, four paragraphs just to give you the most important paragraphs. Of course, if you want to write also a short introduction um, in the research proposal is okay. Uh, be sure to write, uh, to go straight to the point, okay? Uh, for instance, the research scope and scientific questions, that is a paragraph that could probably contain already the introduction. But if you want to make uh, also to, to add an introduction paragraph, you are welcome. Uh, be careful to not uh, exceed the 2,500 words though. Uh, let me go now to the uh, attendees. And uh, I see Marta Cusa uh, can uh, uh, now uh, talk. Marta Cusa, you can make your question. Yes, can you hear me? Very well. Okay, thank you very much. I would like to, to ask uh, regarding the research proposal, mm -hmm. how much we have to go into the details uh, of the methodology? Uh, yeah, if you can, because uh, I'm writing with uh, 
right now and uh, yeah i at the moment i i don't know a lot of things so yeah. i don't know uh, how much can i go in the details and yeah 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 that. very clear very clear thank you thank you. Thank you for your question. Yeah, okay. Um, well, uh, how much going to the details? So I have to say that uh, the research proposal will be read by the member of the commissions and by the experts, okay? So your research proposal will be read by expert of your field, of the field of the research topic, which means that you can, you are allowed to use specific languages and you can go into the detail of the methodologies. You can refer to specific techniques, you can, you can refer to uh, well-known and consolidated methodologies in the field. That's okay because the research proposal will be read by uh, experts. However, remember that you do not have to exceed the, the five pages, the 2,500 words. So this is not a uh, description of a big project. Big project can have 30, 50 pages. Here we have just five pages. So you need to have a trade-off between going into the details that is okay, because in this way you can let the reader understanding that you know already something that you can show your knowledge and that is good but do not exaggerate because uh, you do not want to miss the big picture, okay? The overall picture, you want to have uh, the framework of your research in the research proposal, okay? So you need to, to choose a little bit of trade-off. However, Marta, you can go into the details and this is also appreciated. Thank you. Uh, let's see other questions. Uh, uh, I see... Uh, Haley Bele Desta. Haley, you can talk. Sorry for my bad pronunciation. Haley Bele Desta, can you hear me? Okay, let's move to another one. Dinda Gabriel. Dinda, you can talk. Dinda, can you hear me? Okay, let's move to another one. Uh, Paulos File. Paulos? You have to unmute. Eh? When, uh, when I allow you to talk, you need uh, to unmute. Okay, Paulos. Okay. Yes. I'm hearing you, okay? Thank you very much for your uh, presentation of this program. I'm faced with some problems when I'm registering on this program. So, your PICA registration form is not accepting the credential is what I am feeling on your, on your uh, forum. And uh, that is uh, the problem that I am facing now. I am very interested in your program. So how can I uh, feel this? Uh, how can I register for your program? That's my question. Okay, thank you. Okay, Paulus, if you go on our YouTube channel, you will find a, a, a webinar specifically on the platform. So on the credentials, on the uh, how to step-by-step -step follow the procedure. So my suggestion, Paulos, is to go there, read, try, watch uh, very carefully that webinar. And if you got still some questions, you can email to the secretary, but I'm sure uh, the uh, the webinar will be very very useful. Okay. Uh, I see uh, Patrick Mikael. Patrick, you can talk. Patrick, you have to unmute yourself to talk. Okay, let's uh, move to another one. Uh, Devi, Devika Hemalata Devi. Thank you, Mario, for your presentation. Am I audible? Yeah, thank you. Um, so my question is, uh, could we have some clarity on how the interview will inform the selection process, especially uh, what kind of interview it will be and what we will be interviewed upon? 
Yeah, yeah, very, very Thank important you. question. Thank you, Devika. Thank you. Uh, okay, the uh, oral interview is, uh, a, a, first of all, will be just uh, uh, remotely on Zoom, like, uh, like we do here. So you do not have to worry about uh, traveling for this oral interview. You can uh, uh, take your interview from home, make sure to have a, a good internet connection. You need to have your video and your microphone, and you need to have your ID document with you. These are the only things that you need for your oral interview. You will show your ID document before starting the interview and uh, uh, the commission, which is made uh, of at least three members, but depends on the curriculum, uh, will uh, interview uh, on three things. First of all, on your uh, curriculum, okay? your experiences, uh, you will talk very freely about your skills, uh, your, um, uh, you know, personal um, attitude, uh, and anything related with your professional career, with work experience, whatever, very free. Second, they will ask you something about the research proposal. So they have read your research proposal, they may have questions, they may ask you to elaborate a little bit more on some aspects of the research proposal. They can uh, have suggestions like, for instance, what do you think if you could modify your research proposal in this way, for instance? And third, uh, they will assess uh, your English speaking and the uh, interview will be in English and for this reason, uh, of course, uh, uh, they will evaluate also the level of your English. Uh, if you want, you can prepare a presentation, like a PowerPoint presentation on your, for your research proposal. Be sure to have a presentation short, because in total, you will have about approximately 25 minutes for your oral interview, and the commission may have questions. So your presentation should be short and straight to the point, but it could be that by using the presentation, you may uh, probably present better your ideas if there are complex ideas there. Um, another thing the uh, commission will ask you during the interview is whether you want to consider also other research topics, research scholarships, uh, besides your selection. This is an important point because uh, after having read your curriculum and your research proposal, probably the member of commissions may have also other suggestions about research topics and say, did you consider also the topic uh, number 37? Because probably your uh, profile is very, very good for that uh, scholarship. You may consider also uh, scholarship number 42 and so on, okay? This is important because I forgot to say that besides your selection, you can get eligibility also on other scholarships if the research, the, the um, uh, commission uh, has asked to you, okay? So be, uh, be prepared also to other proposals. Uh, have your research topics with you printed or in any case available on your screen, because if the commission will propose you other research topics, you can read there the description and you can say, yes, I'm considering also these scholarships or not. The oral interview, um, is the uh, best way for you to show your real capabilities and skills. So be prepared to this important interview in a, in a way, in a very professional way. Try to have a PowerPoint presentation, very clear, not full of words, but uh, straight to the point with uh, readable images and captions. Uh, 
and uh, with the good titles and the structure with bullet points of the mean, the key uh, features, the key points you want to uh, address to. Okay. Uh, the oral interview uh, is also a, a, an opportunity for you to add something that you probably forgot in your research proposal or in your letter of purpose. Is an interaction with the commission in a very um, open and uh, transparent way. The other candidates can attend the oral interview, the, uh, your oral interview. Uh, oral interviews are public examination. So this means that when we will give you the link uh, for the oral interview, there is a session like this one where there are attendees and there are people uh, performing uh, the uh, interviews and the others can follow the discussion. And my suggestion is also to attend some of the oral interviews of your colleague to have an idea of uh, how they are made, okay? As you see, we, in, the, in the website, we publish the calendar of the oral interview that will be from the 1st of September, to, from the 4th of September to the 22nd of September for the first call uh, from the uh, 13th of September to the uh, 22nd of September for the second call. So be sure uh, to be available uh, during those days. We will, of course, send you a calendar with the slot where you are placed. We cannot, unfortunately, uh, ask you, uh, to all of you, the availability before, but uh, we will uh, publish that calendar and uh, I suggest you to uh, make uh, uh, you know, all the, the, the best to be available in the suggested, uh, in the suggested uh, slot. Thank you for the question. Uh, let's see if there are other questions. Hayet uh, Bellakelal. Um, Hayet, sorry for my bad pronunciation. It's fine. Thank you, Mr. Mario, for your efforts, uh, yeah. for explaining uh, all the information. So I'm basically from Algeria, and uh, our grading system is out of 20. But actually, the highest uh, grade are 16. So my question is, should I make my, uh, my grades out of 16 or 20? And um, my second question is concerning the dissertation. So if you can just give some hints about dissertation, like the word counts, are we supposed to write a research paper during the Yeah, I got your question. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Very important questions. Thank you, Ayed. Okay. Um, about the score, uh, as you mentioned, your uh, system, uh, any system is different because the, we are very, uh, the, we, we have very different systems, uh, educational systems in the world. Um, if you say that your system gives maximum 16 as a point, and this is an official uh, information, which means that it's not possible to get more than 16, it's not just statistics, but it's like that, the rule, then my suggestion is to put 16 as a, the out of, okay? But uh, make sure this is not a, a, an historical data. This is the official data. Uh, 16 is the maximum uh, for, the, um, for the, the, your graduation uh, as a rule. About the second one, the dissertation. Okay, during your PhD, you will prepare a, a PhD uh, thesis, and the thesis will be the basis of a dissertation uh, with a commission at the end of the third year. In our PhD, the dissertation is made of papers. Uh, we suggested uh, we, we actually, it, it's not the only, uh, the only form of, this, of a dissertation because uh, there are areas where you can write uh, a monography. But uh, in uh, many cases, uh, what we suggested is uh, to write the dissertation as a set of scientific papers. Like for instance, uh, three papers on the same topic, 
you as the first author or corresponding author, or in any case, the main contributor of, uh, uh, on uh, the scientific paper, three papers connected one uh, on the other with an introduction chapter the, uh, at the beginning and the conclusions at the end. This could be a typical structure of a PhD dissertation. I'm not saying this is exactly the same for all the curricula, but because each curriculum has uh, its own guidelines, but uh, this is the model. We want the dissertation to be a collection of research papers, scientific papers. The reason is because in this way, you get out of your PhD with already a list of publications. And this is a very important thing for your academic career, okay? Thank you, uh, thank you for the question. Let's see if there are, uh, thank you, Ayet. Uh, um, uh, there are other questions. Kurban uh, uh, Aliyar, sorry for the, my bad pronunciation. You can talk. Kurban, you need to unmute. Hello, can yes. you hear me? Yes, very well. Uh, thank you so much. I'm Kurban Aliyar. And I am asking in the chat also, but I couldn't register in new account. It's the, I tried several times, but I couldn't register what's the problem that the password doesn't accept. Okay. So there is a, a help, a support button in the, in, the, uh, in the platform you can write to. The, have you attended the uh, webinar on uh, the platform? Yeah, yeah, I, I see, I follow uh, uh, um, every part of instruction okay. properly, but it, it, it doesn't accept. Okay, so now try please uh, then to write to the support. Probably there is an information, uh, an IT problem there that uh, can be solved by the assistants, okay? Okay, okay, I will email. Him. Thank you, Corbin. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's go to back to the question and answers. I see other questions here. I have written papers but couldn't publish because of high publication charges, so I have published them in uh, Archiv and preprint. Can they be considered as publication? Yes, you can list them. Of course, uh, uh, published papers as a different role. But it's important to see these papers as well to understand your uh, research path. So uh, you can absolutely uh, do that. Um, let's see other questions here. Uh, allow to talk uh, to Kashif Khan. Kashif? Much. Hello, sir. Hello. Thank you so much, sir, for giving me time. <clears throat> sir, since I have been applying for, uh, almost I have applied uh, for more than seven universities in Italy. And uh, I have uh, uh, one publication and uh, two abstracts uh, in, uh, in a conference. Uh, I have more than three years of experience and a lot of Kashif, I'm afraid that your connection is not good because I cannot hear you. Kashif? I'm sorry, let's try later. Let's move uh, to um, Nuru, Nuru Mohamed, Nuru. You can allow to talk. You are allowed to talk. Nuru, can you hear me? Can you yeah. hear me? Yeah. Yes. 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 Can Nuru, you can talk. Hello? Unfortunately, the connection was not good. Uh, let's move now to uh, Abdus Samad Azad. Abdus? Hello? Can you hear Hello, me? Hello, Dr. Mario. Thank you so yeah. much for the wonderful presentation. It was very clear and we understand lots of things of the presentation. Just I have a small question. 
like uh, my bachelor and the master's degree i have completed and uh, there was one uh, if i'm not wrong like uh, one option i i found that uh, that uh, the institution i have completed my bachelor and masters is the institution is verified or the recognized by the italian university system or uh, like official database or not so that thing actually i just need a bit clarification yeah so the qualification will be um uh, consider equivalent to the, to the Italian uh, qualification system, the Italian qualification system from uh, by the commission. So the commission will read your qualifications and uh, will evaluate based on the title, based on the transcript, uh, that as equivalent or not to one of the eligible uh, qualifications. Okay, so oh. basically the uh my suggestion is to provide the degree certificate uh, translated in english uh, and uh, additional notes if necessary to uh, facilitate the work of the uh, commission okay uh, i see david omata david you are allowed to talk okay hello um Good day. Thank you for this presentation. My question is, I already have a master's degree in environmental science and sustainable development, but I am currently doing an MPhil in renewable and sustainable energy. I, for my current program, I would be done with my thesis by December, but the defense won't come until maybe February or March next year. And I still want to apply for this scholarship. So I want to get clarification on you on my eligibility to apply. Yeah, yeah, David, uh, absolutely. You, your qualifications are, are uh, good for the uh, submission of an application. Uh, of course, during a, a PhD, uh, you are, um, not allowed to attend other courses. So if you uh, are awarded with uh, a scholarship for our PhD, you need uh, to, uh, to end your MPhil. I don't know when the MPhil is expected to end, but in any case, uh, you can get your PhD just if it's the only course that you are attending. You cannot attend other courses, other PhD courses or master courses while during uh, the PhD. Uh, this open uh, also to a, a question that you may have is when the uh, degree is expected, okay? You need to be graduated before the 20th of December, which is the beginning of the PhD. So you can submit an application even though you are not yet graduated, you can be graduated in the session of, uh, in the autumn session, September or October, or even in the winter session in December, okay? The important thing is that you get graduated before the 20th of December, okay? Okay, very well. Um, there are uh, other questions. Uh, let me take uh, the last one, unfortunately, because uh, we run out of time. Let me allow to talk Spencer Taylor. Spencer Taylor, you have to unmute yourself. Yes. Hello, Mario. Hello, Hello. everyone. And so, yeah, so uh, thank you again for your presentation. I would just like to have clarity on uh, our research topic, uh, like I posted in, in the chat room, uh, I wanted to inquire if I want to narrow or restrict the topic to a specific region, maybe in the global south or maybe West Africa. Like for instance, I want to assess the impact of climate change on transport systems in West Africa. Is that possible or the research topic should follow exactly what you have uh, listed? in, in, in uh, your research. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Good question. Thank, thank you. So you. Thank you, Spencer. Thank you. Uh, very well. Um, 
the research topic, as I told you, is a, 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 provides you guidelines, okay? Is a context. Um, changing the area, the study area, it is possible if agreed with your supervisor. But for sure, in your research proposal, you can say that uh, if possible, you would like to change the study area in a different, uh, in a different uh, region of the world. Absolutely, you are more than welcome to do that. At the end, after uh, the evaluation, if you got awarded um, by a scholarship, uh, uh, the, uh, the real research program you will follow is an agreement between you and your supervisor. So your request, your suggestion is more than welcome. If you want to apply to your research to another area, and there are good motivations, like for instance, there are already available data, or there is your personal interest to contribute to their country, absolutely the supervisor will take into consideration this is. Uh, in the research proposal, I invite you to specify that if possible, you would like to change the study area in uh, the other region and list uh, the motivations you would like to do that. Thank you, Spencer. So um, I see there is a, another another uh, question written here. What kinds of titles and qualifications are considered for the health area? I'm a doctor. Last year I was rejected for a lack of curriculum, but I have nine publications, three reference letter, and they speak seven language. I have a certificate course of ultrasound in my field. I don't know what I miss and I'm afraid of falling again. Okay, Chiara, thank you for these questions. The, um, the qualifications, the title for uh, the health area of any research topics are evaluated by the commission according to what is written in the suggested skills. So it's not important the number of publications or the number of qualifications that you have, not just that, but it's important also the coherence with the, the research topic you are applying to. So make sure you are applying to a research topics where your publications count are related to, your qualifications are related to. The commission for sure uh, will consider that you know, on the light of the coherence of the research. Thank to all of you for these uh, questions and giving me the opportunity to uh, talk about our PhD. I don't know if Marcello would like to add something, probably information about our websites. Please, Marcello. No, Marie, if you can just sure remember to use the filter on our website in order to avoid the, the mismatch between uh, the what we can find on our website and what is in the code. In particular, select the filter now open. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Let me open again the the. Oh, the screen here is Safari. So Marcello is suggesting you that when you use the research topics engine, you see here now open. This is uh, uh, this button because as you see here, we also list uh, uh, the uh, other uh, the other cycles uh, as research topics, okay? But if you press this button, you are sure you can select just the uh, topics open for this call. So let me write, for instance, my name. And if I select this, there is just one topic. But if I do not select that, and I, I write Martina, as you see, there are other, like for instance, these, which is available, but this is not for our cycle, okay? Cannot be applied for this cycle. So please make sure when you make this, this selection to press this button, eh? this button should be highlighted and uh, to select just uh, on the open calls. And to make sure you make uh, the right uh, selection, when you go to the calls, the announcement of the calls, 
you read it and you can see the code is reported here, okay? This is the code, the official code for your research, okay? So the search engine is very, very useful to have an idea of all the research topics in our PhD. Some of them are already ongoing, but they are not open for this call. For this reason, you need to select, again, 39 cycle, now open, okay? Make sure you select that. Thank you, Marcello. Uh, thank, thank to all of you. The recording for of this uh, uh, webinar will be available in a couple of hours on our YouTube channel. Uh, let me thank also Fabio Negri uh, that we, together with the Marcello Rosio, help me to answer to all the questions. All the Q&A are uh, available to you if you want to scroll down the question and answers. Uh, you can also copy all of them if you want. You will receive the link to the recording of this uh, webinar in a couple of hours. And uh, remember that if you have questions, you can write to the secretary, phd sdc at uspavia.it. Um, before writing an email, I ask you, kindly ask you to read carefully the instructions in the announcement, to watch the webinars we already produce and on the YouTube channel, because I'm sure that most of the doubt, most of the questions you may have are already answered. Thank you all, and I hope to see you in Italy, in Pavia next year. Bye.